breakfast from BBC News and it's been almost a year since so-called legal highs were banned. But recent news coverage of people openly using the synthetic drug Spice in public means it's under the spotlight more than ever. Now paramedics say the unpredictable effects of the substances on users is making their job harder and putting them at risk of assault. Dan Whitworth has more on this story. A warning his report does contain images of drug taking. Spice was banned by the government nearly a year ago, along with other so-called legal highs. But that doesn't worry Adam and Derek. Since the ban came in, I think it's easier to get a hold of and it's a bit cheaper as well. Police in Manchester say they dealt with around 60 incidents involving the drug last weekend alone while the College of Paramedics, which represents 11,000 emergency workers across the UK, says the use of synthetic drugs is making treating people even harder. Spitting, biting, punching, kicking, those kind of things are what paramedics have to put with. So it's really important for people to realise that actually this substance, whatever it is you're taking, you've no idea what it is and it could kill you. And unfortunately, that's what we're seeing. People's kids are dying. It's a familiar problem for charities like Lighthouse. Some of the people at this drop-in session have struggled to stop using Spice. I was a heroin user 17 years ago. I've been clean off that 17 years. Um, I've been smoking Spice 9 and it's a lot stronger than heroin. Uh, three years ago, that's when my life started with Spice. Uh, it's not good. I can't eat. I've lost a load of weight from it. And it's just ruined my life, basically. The government says it will publish a new drug strategy shortly, aimed at stopping the use of synthetic drugs just like Spice. And it says anyone caught using these kind of drugs already face up to five years in prison. Dan Whitworth, BBC News, Leeds. Well, joining us now is Neil Woods, a former undercover police officer who's now chairman of Leap UK, which campaigns to reform drug policy. Morning to you, Neil. Good morning. And um, why are people taking Spice now? Well, I mean... At Leap UK, we predicted that as soon as these chemicals were, were banned, there would be an increased problem with them, uh, as, as happened with similar legislation in Ireland and Poland. People are taking them as because they are, they are cheap. I mean, you know, there's pictures that you just showed in your clip there of homeless people. Now, they, these people, they're not zombies. They're people who are struggling to cope with living life on the streets. And... Um, I, having worked amongst homeless people and manipulated them myself as an undercover police officer, um, I, I am sure that if I had to live on the streets, I'm not sure I would cope without getting high as cheaply as possible. And I think that would be the case with, with most people. We saw some of those glimpses, and people maybe have seen these with their own eyes in, in high streets. People have taken spice or other substances and, and unpredictable effects they have. Well, what, I mean, what can you tell us about that, particularly to do with spice? Well, the, the trouble is, as soon as you surrender a commodity to the black market, it becomes adulterated, it becomes... We, we don't... We've, there's no control at all what's in it, so the strongest possible chemicals are in it, because it's financially worthwhile to gangsters to have to sell the strongest product, because it, it's, it's most cost-effective. So the economy of the black market makes drugs more dangerous. So that's why you are seeing... Uh, much more impactive effect, unpredictable drugs. Um, it, it's the same with the wider, with wider drugs legislation. Since we banned them, drugs have got stronger, cheaper and more varied. Is this also um, an after effect of the tightening up of legislation surrounding marijuana? Well, I mean, cannabis is an interesting one. Um, I mean, people call this synthetic cannabis. It's not. I mean, people take cocodamol for a headache. Uh, it's in the same chemical family as heroin, but it doesn't make it the same thing. You know, this is far, far more dangerous than cannabis. But I think it's safe to say that if cannabis had been regulated, say, 15 years ago, then synthetic cannabinoids, this spice, wouldn't be around because it is a product of the prohibition of cannabis. There will be people watching this, and I know you take a very different view, that, that one of the jobs of administrations, of government, of lawmakers, is that you say things, you, you, you set laws up to stop people doing things you don't want them to do. And you don't want people taking spice, so that's why the legislation is there, because you want to send out a statement of things you don't want people doing. Now, you know people say that. That is the argument. Well, I mean, how do you deal with that thing? That if you make it legally available, you are necessarily sending out a message that it's something that is acceptable. Well, messages don't save lives or reduce harms. And the legislation as it's, as it's been 
our drug laws and the way that we approach drugs is not working. Every time you ban something, it just empowers the black market, it makes the black market more violent, more dangerous. Drugs can be dangerous, so we need to get them under control. That's why we at Leap UK, ex-chief constables, undercover operatives, ex-military, we've worked on the front line in the war on drugs. And we're, we're, we're telling you that we need to get this problem under control. And you can only do that by regulating. You, we have no control over it at the moment because gangsters supply it. How many of these people, you know, we, these distressing images that we see on public streets, shopping centres, bus stops, you know, people who are in this zombie-like state, how many of these people should actually have been helped or could have been helped with early intervention from mental health services? Well, exactly. I mean, clearly these people, they, they do need help. And the way that we treat homeless people is, is just horrific. And, you know, walking along the streets of Manchester here, the, the numbers of people has increased so much. Well... Even if you don't care about these vulnerable people, think about the financial situation because it's actually... Policing drugs is the single biggest bill in policing. It's extremely, extremely expensive. It's actually far cheaper to look after people. So if you were to invest in the mental health services, if you were to invest in the accommodation for these people, ask the police officers going to the calls time after time, like last weekend, what would they rather be spending their time doing? And I think they would rather be doing something which is which is, a, which is positive. OK, Neil, thank you very much for your time this morning. Neil Woods, uh, former undercover drugs uh, detective, uh, now chairman of uh, charity Leap UK.